Welcome back to our lexicon of luxury, an alphabetical listing of the marketing jargon and insider terms employed by the global luxury industry. Let's resume with the letter L. L is for limited edition, referring to a special product line released over a limited period of time or in limited numbers, and therefore rare and potentially collectible. Note that the word limited can be defined loosely. Omega Seamaster 300 Spectre watch, worn by Agent 007 in the same Bond film, is a limited edition piece. That is, limited to 7,007 pieces. While this 2.5 million US dollar limited edition Patek Philippe Grandmaster chime to commemorate the company's 175th anniversary is limited to only seven pieces. The numbers associated with limited may vary, but the principle is the same. Produce unique products for hardcore fans and collectors of the brand, and to create some media frenzy. M stands for Manufacture. Yes, it's pronounced Manufacture, because it's French for workshop or factory. In the context of a luxury business, a manufacturer is nothing like your typical industrial factory, filled with worker drones assembling parts shipped from all over the world. In fact, the opposite of outsourcing and global supply chains, a manufacturer takes after a more traditional concept of the pre-industrial workshop, where skilled craftsmen, not laborers, design, create, build, and package products from A to Z under a single roof. Yes, it adds a hell lot of more cost to production. That's why JJ Le Cool timepiece with a manufacturer movement will always feel more special and cost much more than one assembled with OEM parts sourced from who knows where. N is for natural, as in food and products made with natural ingredients or natural fibers. Organic is preferred, but all natural is impressive too. And if it's going to be sold as luxury, only 100% natural will do. Choosing natural matters most in the food industry. Natural ingredients are definitely harder to source, but you can taste the difference and it's healthier too. In the luxury fashion industry, choosing natural over synthetic is de rigueur. Leather, cotton, wool, or cashmere, they're easier on the nose and more comfortable to the skin. O is for old school, or like how we imagine things were done in the good old days. Traditional barbershops are making a big comeback worldwide because of it. It's partly driven by novelty and nostalgia, but for most, it's a repudiation of our culture's penchant for instant gratification that encourages quick but mediocre quality and service. Be it shaves that last an hour to hand-sewn suits that take two months to make, customers are slowly discovering the rewards of being patient. Next is P, P for premium. It's the alternate term for affordable luxury, which used to be popular until marketers found out it makes customers feel cheap. Premium promises mass exclusivity, mass-produced products with better quality, and a price tag that evokes some level of exclusive ownership. Volkswagen in the Philippines has played the premium card very well transforming a company known for making people's cars into a premium European brand many aspire to. Premium isn't luxury per se, but it's one step closer in terms of status and quality. Q is for quirkiness, brands and products that are quirky, avant-garde, and full of whimsy. Because patronizing brands and buying products that are quirky 
requires self-confidence, sophistication, and good taste. Every purchase is a personal statement. MBNF is a good example of this. They make watches and clocks, not so much for telling time, but what the heck, for amusement. You see, quirky things are unnecessary. So blowing big bucks on such novelties is one hell of a luxury. R is for red carpet, literally and figuratively. Extending red carpet treatment to VIPs is a tried and tested way of luring clients. But marching those VIPs on an actual red carpet is an even more clever way of popularizing the brand and getting international press coverage. For IWC, it's getting high-profile clients and friends of the brand to show off their luxury watches. For Chaparm, it's having the world's most famous women model their jewelry on the Cannes Film Fest red carpet for free. Sybarite is our word for S. A Sybarite is an epicure, a bon vivant, a hedonist, or simply put, the consummate consumer of sensuous luxury. There are two types of big spenders, those who buy things for their material value and those who consume things only for pleasure. The Sybarite is the latter. Rare wines and spirits, fine food and grand holidays, these are the fleeting but extreme luxuries that occupy the Sybarite's world. T is for timeless. For reputation and style, every luxury brand hopes to achieve. For German car maker Porsche, timeless means banking on the iconic 911's 50-year design to make it one of the best-selling sports cars of all time. For fashion house Chanel, timeless means the Chanel No. 5's packaging, bottle, and scent, which have remained relatively unchanged for nearly a century. Timeless means classic, iconic, the holy grail of the luxury industry. U is for understated, as in understated luxury. At first, the term seems contradictory, right? But some of the most enduring luxury products and successful luxury brands have thrived under the radar, with understated product designs and quiet branding. Few outside watch enthusiast circles have heard of Alanga und Sonne. Yet the German watchmaker can hardly supply enough of its timepieces to meet market demand. Patek Philippe's best-selling watch of all time is the Calatrava, a simple, understated design that continues to be among its most coveted. Luxury often connotes something flashy, but it can also mean subtlety. V stands for vintage, vintage as in classic, and the world is crazy for it. Take Leica of Germany, which celebrated 100 years of its iconic rangefinder camera in 2014. Vintage Leica rangefinders are prized and collected for their legendary quality, their iconic design, and place in photographic history. Vintage can also refer to the year of origin. In wine, the term is used obsessively. Vintage champagne or champagne made from grapes from a particularly promising year will always trump non-vintage bubbly. As with reds and whites, vintage is everything. The reputation of the estate matters, but also the year of harvest. The difference between a year is only a year, but it could mean spending hundreds of dollars more for the better vintage. A commonly used W word in the luxury property business is waterfront. Real estate along the coast or fronting a river or lake is every high-end developer's jewel and every upscale buyer's dream. 
Hotels and resorts with uninterrupted views of the water can charge a premium over those without one. From Singapore to Paris, Istanbul to Prague, or right here at home in Manila, if you've got a view, flaunt it, because clients will willingly pay the price for it. X is, well, just X. Marketers use a symbol to denote a collaboration between two separate brands or entities. Swiss sports watchmaker Hublot have teamed up with FIFA to produce a series of timepieces for the UEFA Cup and the Champions League. Tag Heuer with Intel and Google for the Swiss watch brand's latest series of connected timepieces. Omega with NASA for the iconic Speedmaster Moonwatches. The list of professional collaborations goes on. No matter how powerful a brand collaborating with others provides a boost, whether it's for improving your product or just for marketing. Y is for YOLO, which is not a word, but an acronym. You only live once is a millennial generation's battle cry. Luxury brands are tapping into it. Rising incomes worldwide has produced a generation of youngsters with purchasing power to die for. And brands are offering YOLO-inspired services and experiences to grab their share of the pie, the travel and hospitality industries especially. Airlines, hotels, tour companies are all tweaking their services to emphasize experiences and maximize memories. After all, when people live each day like the last day of their life, they spend like there's no tomorrow. Z is for Zen, and it's a tiny way to end. Studies show overconsumption can lead to consumer fatigue. And when this happens, people opt for pared down lifestyles and alternative consumer patterns. Zen means rediscovering simplicity and minimalism, authenticity and spirituality. Values increasingly common among post consumerist societies. It's not necessarily trading down or even spending less. It's just a new way of defining value. In other words, it's post-luxury luxury. And that's all for this episode of Executive Class. I'm David Saldana. Thanks for watching. <laughs>